Welcome back. Now we answer questions we've received from you, our viewers. If you have a question, visit our website, QuranSpeaks.com. Dr. Shabir, the question is, um, I used to believe that Islam is the only way to God. However, I'm currently studying in Japan, and I came to realize there are other ways to God. For example, through long meditation, you are able to tap into your higher self and achieve ultimate peace through connecting to or becoming integrated to God, all of which I believe could only be achieved through prayer. Why do you think that Islam is the only way to God? Well, to begin with, Safiya, I don't say that Islam is the only way to God. I think it's the best way that I know uh, to God, but uh, there could be other ways that are leading in some um, uh, way, even um, you know, in a lesser way uh, to God, and, and God's mercy encompasses all. Uh, so, uh, why do I take this broader view? First of all, we, we should recognize the traditional view, which is very common among Muslims, to think that uh, only Islam leads to God, and hence the questioner mm -hmm, seems mm -hmm. to start with that presupposition. Um, so this that, is what most people think, right? Yes, yes. Because, uh, that's, that's, a, uh, that's a simple position that's based on taking certain passages of the Quran in a literal way, um, but maybe also in a simplistic way. So uh, let me think about the literal way first. So uh, there is a verse of the Quran in, in the third chapter, the 19th verse. It says, in Nadina, in Allah al Islam, the religion with God is Islam. Mm -hmm. So we're using the Arabic word here uh, as if it's the name of a religion. But initially, it may not have been the name of a religion. It may, may have just meant what the Arabic word means, submission. Mm -hmm. So a small it, I, then. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it could mean that, um, you know, the way to God, uh, the, 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 the religion in the sight of God is characterized by submission. Mm -hmm. So um, if one submits that to God, one is on sense. religion, then mm -hmm. uh, th that's what God demands in terms of religion. Uh, in the same chapter, in the 85th uh, verse, it says, uh, Whoever chooses other than Islam as a religion, uh, th th that will not be accepted from him or her, and they will, in the end, be among the losers. Mm -hmm. So here it seems to refer to the name of a religion, but we have to uh, remove uh, from our minds the presupposition that it is in the name of a religion, and think about what it must have meant in the time of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, when the Quran was being revealed. Now, in, in the context of that verse, uh, just before it, there was a verse that says, uh, Do they choose other uh, than the religion of God? Whereas uh, everything in the heavens and the earth submit to God. Here, the, the uh, the verb is used, aslama. Mm -hmm. uh, so they all submit to God. So clearly it's not the name of a religion here. It is the, the act of submission. Now, the, the verbal noun of that verb, as aslama means they submit, that's the verb. Uh, Al-Islam means the submission. It's the verbal noun. Mm -hmm. uh, so it seems that it's not necessarily the name of a religion in, in verse number 85. Uh, but it is the act of submission to God. Mm -hmm. uh, so in that case, we, we understand that God is accepting from all cultures and civilizations people who submit to him. Uh, and they may be submitting to him based on the knowledge that reached them, their own intellectual capacities and a number of factors, but God is the ultimate judge. And just as a just judge nowadays, uh, would judge people based on their circumstances and their own intellectual capacities and so on. So too, the, 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 the judge of judges, the most just of all, uh, our God will, will judge people based on their circumstances and, and their own uh, uh, aptitudes. Mm -hmm. So Dr. Shabir, do you think that all paths to God are equal or is Islam somehow superior? Well, from what I know of Islam and what I know about other paths, I would say without hesitation that Islam is superior. And, uh, and, and that, of course, is my chosen uh, path. Somebody may say, well, I have a bias as a Muslim mm -hmm. already, and I cannot deny that I have a certain bias. But in my uh, attempts to be objective and to study the religions across the world, as much as I could have, at least in, a, in an introductory way, um, it's hard to master all of the world's religions. But from, from what I see, um, Islam clearly, clearly stands out. 
Um, you know, we, we have some choice, choices in life and uh, hardly anything is proven with a knockdown type of proof. Uh, but we see that among the options, here is how I would analyze it. Uh, we, we either believe that there is a God or, or we don't believe that there is a God. If we don't believe that there is a God, then uh, we can have atheism as our chosen path in life, or we might adopt a non-theistic religion such as Buddhism. Mm -hmm. If we believe that, uh, no, no, let's think about Buddhism for the moment and think more generally, should we even have a religion? If we want to have a religion, either we adopt one of the existing religions or we invent our own. Mm. But how do we invent our own? Like, how do we even begin to invent a religion? Uh, in the case of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and other charismatic leaders in the past, somehow they had this uh, vibe about them uh, that they could start preaching that they uh, are, you know, um, calling on people to follow them, and they get following. And, uh, you know, some of them uh, said that they were in communion with God, as in the case of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he was mm -hmm. directly receiving a revelation from God. So how would one go about even claiming something like this? Uh, like, would it fit with our psychology to tell people that I'm communicating with God when we know we're not doing that and so on? So how does one form one's own religion? It doesn't seem very doable. Uh, so uh, looking at Buddhism, if one were to be a non-theist, uh, then that's a religion. But uh, uh, why would one think that Buddhism is true? Um, one would have to go back to study the life of Siddhartha Gautama to see, did he really have that experience of, uh, uh, you know, or, and, and does his experience really matter to me? Like he had this experience that leads him to the Four Noble Truths. Um, uh, are there really Four Noble Truths? Why should we believe that? Then if we, if we come to belief in, in God, then we want a religion that ha holds to belief in God. Now, either we're going to adopt a uh, polytheistic religion or a monotheistic religion. If we look at polytheistic religions, uh, Hinduism is a good example of that, though many Hindus, of course, aim towards monotheism by thinking of the universal soul and various gods as manifestations of the one. But uh, thinking of the various gods and worshipping this one in this form and this in the other form and so on, Hinduism does not hold much appeal to me, uh, though I'm sure that uh, its adherents uh, find it appealing. Uh, so, discounting that, I turn to the monotheistic uh, religions, uh, which primarily are represented as uh, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Uh, Judaism is a religion that has a lot going for it and uh, has fed into uh, the good from that is fed into Christianity and Islam. Yet, Judaism has uh, remained uh, a religion with a few followers worldwide, comparatively. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, the, it, it's mostly like a close knit community. Uh, sometimes even the race becomes conflated with the, with the religion so that one is defined as Jewish if one is born from a Jewish mother. Mm -hmm. uh, so that doesn't hold much um, um, appeal for me as being non-Jewish from, from the start. Mm -hmm. And then if we come to Christianity and Islam as the last two standing um, uh, contestants uh, for my <laughs> belief, uh, Christianity, um, from my humble opinion, is uh, saddled with uh, the doctrine of the Trinity. And even if we remove the doctrine of the Trinity with all of its complications, we have the idea of Jesus dying for the sins of others, which seems to make God uh, look either cruel or unjust for taking the life of the innocent person to let the guilty go free. And, and some other such uh, problems. In the end, to me, it is only Islam that uh, remains standing of all the options that are available to me. Mm -hmm. So I feel that Islam is, uh, is superior to all everything that is out there. And it's clearly a way to communicate with God, to pray to God, to have close communion with God, and to live a life that is God-centered. Mm -hmm. Dr. Shabir, I want to ask you a question about um, your idea that other people could achieve salvation. If that's the case, Dr. Shabir, then what would be the point of being a Muslim? So uh, the point would be that, uh, first of all, uh, when we are already guided to this, we cannot turn away uh, to something else. In the third chapter of the Quran, which we've been quoting, uh, there is a verse that speaks about people whose faces will be um, uh, darkened by th their sins uh, on the Day of Judgment, and then it will be said to them, did you disbelieve after you have had faith already? So once we have had faith, uh, we have arrived at faith, we cannot turn back from that. Mm -hmm. Other people may have an excuse because they haven't arrived there yet, uh, but we have already arrived, we cannot turn back. 
Um, and to use a worldly example, uh, you know, I'm, I'm the parent of my, uh, I'm the child of my parents. And uh, uh, let's say my, my siblings were um, uh, disobedient towards my parents. They're not, but let's say they were. Now, I cannot say, oh, my siblings are disobedient to my parents, so why should I be obedient to my parent? I have mm. to say to myself, I, as a child of my parents, have to be dutiful and obedient towards my parents because I am a child. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I'm a servant of God. It doesn't matter if everyone else is doing something different. I have to be a true servant of, of God. And the way to do that is through the religion of Islam for me, even if for some other people, there may be some other way, or maybe people are not choosing any way at all, but that's up to them and that's between them and God. So why be a Muslim? Uh, because once I've already arrived at faith, I cannot turn back. And uh, second, just by being a servant of God, I have to continue to follow the guidance that God has revealed and made available to me. Thank you for sharing that with me, Dr. Shabir. You're welcome. Support guys. We're done with this, guys. And I love the fact that he said Islam is the closest way like, to communicate with God because I will say it's true because you know, you guys actually pray five times a day, every day, and you praying to God is simply put as communicating with God. So I will agree, but in Christianity it's also said to pray without season. So I'm not trying to I'm I'm just trying to let it all out. And I actually love the fact that he is someone that is educated and I love the way he talks about people's religion with respect that like the way he proved his point and like there's a way he says it that is just so appealing to the heart like even if he's telling you you are wrong but he's saying it in a way that you can understand where he's coming from and i love this i love that about it okay same way you think about this special to like share because my channel happy Ramadan, guys i'll see you next time first